Now this is my third ride since I have attempted to fix my bike. Uh, I might tell you a little bit of the story of uh, what all happened while trying to fix the bike. But this is my third ride. The first one was about a mile. It was mainly just to see if it still moved. And anytime I'm messing around with a bike, I'm fairly doubtful of whether it will work again. So we went drove for about a mile or two maybe. And its only purpose was just to find out if I broke anything. And it seemed to work okay. So uh, after a couple hours break, I had, uh, and rechecking everything else out on the bike, I decided to take it out on another ride. I went probably five miles that time. And I returned without any additional problems. So I'm pretty happy with my potential repair of my bike. We'll see how long it lasts, but at least it's starting off looking pretty good. And so, uh, so that's what we're going to go on, is the fact that I did more than absolutely nothing. <laughs> now you might be saying to yourself, wait a second, I thought you were going to uh, take your bike to a bike shop. Hello there, dog. And uh, in actuality, that's exactly what I had planned to do. I had planned to take it to the bike shop uh, because just a bunch of bad things were going on besides breaking the bike and breaking me and getting COVID. I just decided there was too many things going on that I just did not need to risk the fixing the bike also. However, after I got over COVID, I was like, you know, I need to clean the bike before I take the bike to the shop. So, so I cleaned the bike. Well, after I cleaned the bike, I was like, you know, this broken part right here looks like it's just not totally broken. It's just shifted. So if I took the screws out, and realigned it, and then set it back in and reset everything, maybe it would work. So, uh, instead of taking it to a bike shop, I decided to clean the bike. And then after it was clean, then make a decision on whether I wanted to do anything else. I like this parking lot. Plenty of room to drive around in. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, I still have a little bit of cough left over from COVID. It created a lot of drainage, and the drainage ended up uh, sticking around even after I'm no longer, I no longer have COVID. I just have a little bit of leftover stuff. But I'm in good shape. I feel good. Which is especially good because I was feeling really bad there for a while. I was feeling like uh, uh, I was extremely tired, <laughs> extremely tired. Uh, so it was nice to be able to get to a point to where I no longer felt extremely tired. And in fact, I felt the opposite. For some reason, after you feel extremely tired for uh, a week, uh, when you no longer feel extremely tired, you actually feel like you can conquer the world type <laughs> feeling. Because <laughs> I felt really good afterwards. Uh, that's the reason I was able to decide, hey, I feel so great, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to fix my bike.
So now it turns out that it wasn't the greatest idea in the world to fix the bike because I didn't do any prep ahead of time. Like I didn't plan it. Uh, now you're thinking, hey, you're just gonna clean your bike. How much planning do you need to do? Well, more than I had. <laughs> so I went out to the, uh, to the garage, moved the car out of the garage. I had planned to clean the bike in the garage. Uh, the way I clean the bike is I spray it down uh, and wipe it off and then spray some more and wipe more things off and then clean the uh, chain and then oil the chain. And I can do all that in the garage. I don't have to go outside and uh, it's not gonna get all that much water. I'm not trying to cover my bike with water and just trying to clean it. So I just have a spray that I spray that has um, uh, bike cleaning fluid in it. <laughs> And uh, spray it on, uh, wipe it off, and uh, that pretty much is it. And you just do it everywhere where you see dirt until there's no more dirt. So, uh, now, because uh, it's low to the ground, uh, I needed to get it up in the air. So I decided that I would put it on my bike stand. I needed it on the bike stand for more than one reason. I mean, I did buy the bike stand, so I ought to use it. Uh, but that's helpful on my knees to get it a little bit higher in the air uh, when I'm trying to, it's also easier to see things and clean better uh, when it's in the air so I went to go put it on the uh, bike stand uh, and, and that turned out to be a little bit more trouble than I expected now part of this is because I did not plan so I'm wanting to recommend uh, anybody who wants to use a bike stand to do a little bit of planning. Now, last time I used a bike stand, uh, it took a bit of time and I finally figured it out how to get on it. But I haven't used a bike stand in uh, like six months. So I figured it set up would be just perfectly fine like it was since I had spent all the time putting it up in the correct position the last time. So this time all I need to do is grab my bike, put it on it, clamp it down and start working away. That was my plan. Uh, that turned out to be a bad plan. I really needed to go through and re-tighten up and make sure all of, all of the uh, clamps were on tight because as soon as I picked up the bike, and I have to realize I'm picking up an 83 pound bike uh, picking it up in the air and then putting it on the bike stand. As soon as I put it on the bike stand, the bike stand started sinking. So I'm trying to hold the bike up while it's sinking. <laughs> and yeah, you can't really do that. Now I can hold the bike up to 85 pounds for about, uh, I don't know, 30, 40 seconds. But then it starts getting heavy. And then each second after, after that, it gets heavier and heavier. Uh, and so after uh, it started sinking and I started trying to pick it up and seeing what I needed to adjust, uh, yeah, it turned out that was uh, uh, not gonna work for me. <laughs> I was not strong enough to hold a 85 pound bike up with one hand while uh, make adjustments with the other one. So I had to put the bike back on the ground. I had to go to the stand and then find out which ones were loose and tighten them up and in theory I should have done that first so I'm just going to warn somebody that if you think your bike stand can sit six months in a corner and not need any adjustments uh, apparently that that's not true with my bike stand anyway may not be true with any bike stand <laughs> but definitely not mine so after making the adjustments and verifying that it had ability to hold and not fall back down again, <laughs> I picked the bike up again and was able to put the bike onto the stand very easily and was able to clamp it down. Uh, 
when I say very easily, I mean I was able to do it. But the strength, my strength was beginning to decline while holding it up, trying to get it to stay. But, but I was able to hold it up. So, and I was able to clamp it, even though I was get, beginning to get a bit weak. Uh, so once you get it clamped on, you don't have to put, use any more energy except for verifying the bike stand's not gonna fall on you. Uh, I've watched some people use bike stands before and uh, after watching them getting fall on several times by a 85 pound bike, one of the things I was pretty sure I was not gonna let happen is the bike fall on me. I did not want that to happen. So, uh, and, and it did not happen. Uh, I was able to at least get out of that without the bike falling on me on my bike stand. Uh, once I got it onto the bike stand, uh, cleaning was, was a breeze. Uh, I, I sprayed, I wiped, uh, I polished, I uh, got all the dirt things off. I had uh, several different type of brushes. Uh, <laughs> so with these different type of brushes, I was thinking uh, maybe I should do a video or something of cleaning your bike, but I went online and looked and there's several people that have a cleaning your bike video out there. So, so one more video and, and they seem to be okay. I didn't have any particular special thing that would make, except for putting it on a bike stand, but they put it on bike stands too. So, uh, so there wasn't anything and there's no reason for me to go do that, but, uh, uh, I cleaned it. After cleaning it, I was noticing that the uh, a broken piece was actually probably just shifted. Maybe the uh, screw was slightly loose and it ended up uh, causing it to shift a bit. So I said, well, all I can do is uh, take these screws out and try to realign it and then put the screws back in and see if that does anything. If it doesn't, I was planning on taking it to the bike shop anyway. So. So I'll just take it to the bike shop in pieces. <laughs> They've probably seen things like that before. So I went through and uh, uh, disassembled it. It was just two screws, I think, or three, two. I think that was just two screws. And, uh, and I was able to get it off. Uh, I cleaned it, uh, put it back on, put the screws back on so that it seated properly readjusted my shifting so that the uh, gear shifted properly again and then I did my test and, and it worked out okay so I did not have to take my bike to the, to the bike shop so surprisingly uh, I didn't feel overly confident that I would be able to do that but it was something that I was able to do it was only two screws, so I could have messed it up, but I didn't. I don't, at least I don't think I did. Uh, I, I guess we're still testing to see if I messed it up or not. But I feel like I did a good job. Getting the chain oiled uh, and cleaned, uh, it was fairly muddy, so, so I decided to clean it, and then of course after I cleaned it, I decided that it would be a good idea to uh, re-lubricate it. Uh, and that went pretty well. Of course, I had it on the stand the whole time, so using the stand makes things so much easier. Uh, I'm not sure how well you would be able to do that without a stand, but uh, so I was able to clean the bike uh, and then make the repairs to it and then lube the chain, clean the chain and lube the chain all while it was on the bike stand. Oh, and, and adjust the uh, shifting of the gears so that they sh shifted properly. So I was pretty proud of myself. Now, there's a big consequence of what I was doing. You know, there's almost always a consequence. And whenever I try to do something, there's always a consequence. Well, remember earlier when I said that I didn't really think this through when I started? Well, what I didn't think through was what the temperature was. 
It turned out the temperature was over 100 degrees. And even doing something simple, like clean your bike, now it was not simple putting the bike up on the stand, but, but after the bike was on the stand, all the rest of it was fairly simple stuff. So I'm sitting there thinking uh, how hot it is and the fact that I'm sweating like crazy should not interfere with the fact that this should be fairly easy stuff. However, something I keep not learning is that I need to replenish all this water I'm losing. Uh, so not doing that uh, is, is um, harmful to your body. <laughs> so after working out there, I didn't, didn't take that long. I was out there about an hour maybe, maybe an hour and a half. But it was 100 degrees and I wasn't drinking any water. So if you could think that maybe I was a bit exhausted and uh, felt really, really bad, you'd be right. Uh, you could probably see it coming. I was concentrating on trying to get the bike to work and everything that I wasn't concentrating on trying to survive. That was like, <laughs> I tried to figure out how to survive next. <laughs> the first thing I try to do is, is repair. <laughs> and then we work on surviving. So. Yeah, probably, I gotta learn how to do things differently. So basically the rest of the day, uh, so I think that's, I finished doing that around three o'clock. Up until about nine o'clock that night, I felt miserable. Uh, yeah, apparently you can't teach old dog new tricks. I haven't, just can't seem to catch on to the fact I need to drink water. Uh, I kept telling myself when I was suffering was that this is my own fault. It wasn't much consolation though. <laughs> Knowing that's your own fault does not help you any. In case y'all ever were wonder wondering about that. Yeah, it still hurts. So I was a little bit worried about whether or not uh, since it was so fr soon after COVID if it would create some type of relapse or something. Uh, but I did go from feeling really good about life to uh, not feeling all that great about life. <laughs> but I did have the satisfaction that I'm pretty sure the bike would work. I was too tired to test it out <laughs> to see if I actually repaired it. So I had to wait until the next day to do that. So this is like two days later. Uh, but I drank a lot of water, uh, probably a gallon, to try to make sure I got better eventually. And I did, so. So that's good. Now this is a very pretty area. Man, I'm enjoying this ride. Now I'm not using my Garmin today. Uh, I could use it, but I decided that I just uh, would not use it today and just randomly roam around. Uh, most of these places now, since I've been here a few times, I remember, like I remember taking this street during uh, Halloween. So it's been a while since I've been here, but I remember being on it. So anyway, this video is just gonna be a quick video because all I wanted to do was just to be able to show people that uh, my bike is probably repaired and that uh, maybe we'll start getting some videos again 
Uh, I mean, there's no 100% chance of that happening, but there's a possibility. One of the things I want to do is get a video of driving to Lexington. Now I've checked the highway by using satellites and it looks like there's a bike lane most of the way. Um, about a three foot lane to ride your bike on on the si side of a uh, four lane highway. So that's, it takes about five miles to get there, or maybe more than that, maybe eight miles to get there. Uh, and then, I mean, to get onto the road, to go over Lake Murray, uh, the dam, to cross the dam, and, uh, and get to the other side, there's supposed to be a bike lane going across the dam. And then when you get on the other side, the bike lane continues all the way into Lexington. So I want to try that, see what it's like. I'll be riding next to a four lane highway, but I'll have a bike lane. So hopefully having a bike lane that doesn't disappear <laughs> on and off. Uh, usually like, you can't tell how these bike lanes gonna work out until after you're on, actually on them. Uh, looking at them on a satellite image really doesn't give you a clue. Definitely not as big as clues what you need. So, uh, so hopefully I'll give that a shot sometimes, maybe Monday morning or Tuesday morning, and see how that goes. Now today and yesterday it rained and it rained all this morning and it said it was going to rain all afternoon but uh, it didn't rain. In fact it's maintained a fairly decent temperature. Uh, so the threat of rain apparently kept the temperature down so it did not reach 100 today. In fact it's probably only like 92 or 3 so not too bad when you're riding a bike. Uh, cause you got all that wind blowing on you to help you out. Okay, I guess we'll call that the end for this test of video. This was, we didn't go very, very far at all. Let's see, how far did we go? We, uh, traveled. Let's see. Hmm. I didn't have, well, I don't know how, oh yeah, there it is, five miles. We traveled five miles, so nice, nice, a nice ride. Just five miles, we average about 12 miles per hour, a little less than 12 miles per hour, which is my typical speed. I know some people try, like getting 17 miles per hour is their average, but I prefer uh, 10, actually, so. But we go down a lot of hills, like right now, I'm going 14, 15 miles per hour. I'm not even pedaling, I'm just coasting because we're going down a hill. <laughs> We've been going down a hill for a half a mile. So it's hard to, without hitting your brakes constantly, it's hard, hard to get under, <laughs> hard to get down to 10 miles per hour. Uh-oh. Oh man. Don't go anywhere. Don't have any idea how to get there. All the cars 
avoided it except for the very first one. The first one ran it over. <laughs> and all the rest of them avoided it. So it almost survived if it wasn't for the first one. First car. Yeah, I don't know why it didn't stay in its little thing. I mean, that's the reason you have it is to hold a bottle. Oh well, might as well end it in another problem. All right, we'll see everybody next time. All right, bye.